Gold and silver had a good week. I almost can't believe that I'm sharing that with you right now. But can they keep the momentum alive? What's going on out there that's either going to help or hurt the price of gold as we move into the coming weeks, quarters, and years? We've got some stories specific to the gold market, the silver market, that we want to talk about. Also, there's some macro level stories, inflation, uh, economic growth that will also have a major impact on the price of gold and silver. We're going to cover those in this video. Let's get started right now. Before we cover the market moving events, I want to do a quick recap of the gold and silver markets during the week. Gold ended the week at $1,800 and five dollars per ounce it wasn't too long ago that we were bouncing around in the 1600 range and remember this current price is only 12 13 14 percent off the all-time high so gold continues to perform relatively well to most other asset classes silver ended the week at twenty dollars and eighty three cents just 17 cents shy of 21 dollars per ounce wasn't it just a couple weeks ago that we had silver in the 18 dollar 50 cent per ounce range so silver has performed very very well the junior gold mining index the gdxj Ended the week at $34.53. It was up about 2% for the week. So the mining stocks still have some serious catching up to do. And remember this, the GDXJ just in April was at $52 per share. It would have to increase by 50% from where it closed Friday just to get back to its high that it was at just three months ago. So there's plenty plenty of runway ahead for these junior mining stocks. The silver mining stocks were up about 2% for the week. The S&P 500 closed the week at 4280. It was up about 3% for the week. Sentiment overall in the general market seems to be improving. The US dollar was down about 1% for the week, closing at 105.5. Remember two things. The dollar is still on a historic basis at very high levels. If you look back 20 years or if you look back three to five years, the dollar is very high. That has been a headwind for the price of precious metals. Precious metals have maintained their current value levels in the face of a very strong dollar. If and when the dollar reverses and becomes less valuable, that will provide a tailwind for our friends silver and gold. The only thing I like better than a tailwind for silver and gold is the fact that you, yes you, decided to join me today here in Ron's Basement. You're important. You're always welcome here. If you enjoy my content, you can subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, turn on bell notifications, share the video with anybody, including your grandma, and please leave a comment in the comment section below. That's really where we have an opportunity to learn from each other. Now let's talk about some market moving stories related to silver and gold. I'm no chart reading guru, but it sure feels like to me that gold over the past three weeks has carved out a steady, consistent base in this $1,780 range to $1,800 per ounce range. Now, the chart gurus do love to point out, and I want to remind you, this is something very, very good, that we have a 10-year cup and handle pattern on gold. It is one of the most reliable technical analysis patterns, and it shows that gold has real potential to skyrocket. I'd encourage you to do a little research on the cup and handle pattern, and then even as that relates to gold. It will be very uh, optimistic for you to take a look at that. There's all kinds of commentary coming out stating that the COMEX is being drained of gold at a very, very high rate. The supply of gold in the market is decreasing. Now, couple that, couple that 
with the fact that we got news this week that between 2016 and 2021, global gold mining output actually dropped by 5 or 6 percent. The supply of gold is dwindling. The eastern countries, Russia, China, India, all of them are buying up gold. The supply-demand dynamic continues to look favorable for our friend gold, and the same can be said about silver. Premiums are still very high. We're hearing stories about large buyers of gold and silver. And does it surprise you? Because none other than Jim Cramer came out this week saying that he was bullish on gold. Now, our ex-friends at Goldman Sachs lowered their 12-month target on gold significantly from $2,500 down to $1,950. But hey, $1,950? That doesn't sound too bad to us right now anyway, and we never really liked those people at Goldman Sachs anyhow. Let's move on to another one of our favorite prestigious investment banks. Two ex-traders from JP Morgan were convicted of spoofing in the gold market and, and there's a new charge that's been levied against this guy from, uh, he was on the World Poker Tour and runs a hedge fund. The CFTC is also charging him with spoofing, manipulating the gold market. Hey, what this all signals to me in terms of this focus by the CFTC on the market is they're, they're sending the message that they're watching. No more shenanigans in the gold market or maybe a reduction in shenanigans in the gold market. Nonetheless, all these factors to me add up in aggregate uh, to a positive, supportive force for the price of gold and silver as we move into the coming months, quarters, and years. Now, let's talk about the major economic stories, the macro stories that happened this week, because those also have a big, big impact on the price of precious metals. Despite Joe Biden believing that we have 0% inflation in our country, the official government number released this week was about 8.5%. It ticked down. That was good news, right? Let me reiterate to you, we still have official 8.5% inflation in this country. We know the actual number is much, much higher. We also learned this week that foot traffic at Walmart was down 3%. Look, if people can't afford to shop at Walmart and are foregoing their trips to Walmart, the economy is not in good shape. We also heard that almost 50% of small businesses are having a hard time paying their rent in the month of July. Small business, right? The heartbeat of America, the soul of the American economy doesn't seem to be doing too well. There was also a recent statistic that pointed out amongst families earning $100,000 per year and more, 70% of them reported having trouble paying their bills because of inflation. And when you think about the fact that consumer debt is at all-time highs, people have been using their credit cards, borrowing money to finance this inflation, the future doesn't look so bright for the U.S. economy. The Fed is going to be in a position very soon where they're going to have to deal with major economic issues and inflation issues at the same time. Now that's called stagflation. Jeffrey Gunlock, the respected Wall Street analyst, pointed it out last week when he said, hey everybody, Stop arguing about whether we're in a recession or not. Let's talk about the truth that we are in stagflation. Stagflation, fertile ground for the price of gold and silver. Gold and silver have been ignored by Wall Street for decades now. They've been pushed off over into the corner. Nobody talks about them. Everybody ignores them. Nobody wants to be seen with them at the party, right? They're just over there in the corner. Well, guess what? That's the same 
corner that Jerome Powell is finding himself being increasingly painted into these days. Jerome's going to get over there and all he's going to find is gold and silver, shiny and pretty, valuable like they always have been. Hey, let's ask the gold bear if that's true. Gold bear, is that true? That's right. That's the bear market in gold, the gold bear. When gold gets above $2,500, I'll take his blindfold off and give him some food. But until then, I'll be here with you in Ron's basement, navigating these choppy waters we encounter in the gold, silver, and precious metals mining sector. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Be well.